Hey everyone, this is Will Cook from Boston University. I have another flight test from Neuroflight version 1 I thought I'd share with you. I flew this test last fall shortly after test 2. From these test flights we've identified key issues that need addressing and we've been researching uh, how to actually go about solving these over the last few months to continue to improve the flight performance. We'll be releasing version 0.2 of GymFC in the next week or so, which is a major rewrite fixing some dependency issues with the aircraft digital twin. I'll post a video uh, when it's released that will include the architectural changes and also how, do you, how to get you up and running with the new version. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer them. Now for some clips of the test flights. In this flight, I'm further checking for instability issues and trying to identify states in which the neural network performs undesirable uh, results that I first noticed in flight test two. One issue that can occur is some pretty aggressive drifts when throttle is at min during dives. This half roll was not caused by uh, actual pilot input provided by me. However, this isn't entirely unexpected as the simulation results did indicate that the neural network would uh, actually cause drifting. But it seemed to be, seems to be more exaggerated in dives, which is probably uh, due to external disturbances acting upon the quadcopter body. So as we're in a dive, we have additional um, air resistance on the quadcopter that just is not simulated. Maneuvers that did match closely to simulation were max velocity flips and rolls. A key observation is that the reward system we use during training appears to create controllers that are more accurate at faster velocities. This could possibly be due to the lower velocity maneuvers are more sensitive to differences in the reality gap. That is the gap between simulation and the real world. A second issue occurs during high throttle in which a counter rotation is introduced. This behavior isn't that surprising though. During training the agent has no concept of this throttle battle, uh, no concept of the throttle value. Although we've completed a significant milestone achieving flight, NeuroFlight trained with GymFC and the modifications outlined in our NeuroFlight preprint paper has a relatively small flight envelope. When casually flying, there is some expected drifting that occurs, but the aircraft is very controllable. Our current research is now focused on expanding the flight envelope and further advancing the performance. As for a summary of the flight test, we found that drifts occur when the angular velocity is at zero degrees per second and also when there is a zero throttle input. However, from our simulation results, this was expected behavior. Additionally, we found that high velocity rotations that are performed at zero throttle, for example, this would be equivalent if you were in say air mode, were quite accurate. And this was also expected from our simulation results. However, uh, the counter rotations that occur at high throttle, although uh, we seem to be able to explain this behavior, our current hypothesis is that the aircraft is not trained on different throttle values and thus the state transitions by the neural network can't be defined and control output errors are thus magnified. If you haven't come across it already, the quadcopter uh, to the right in the slide here is the one for our NeuroFlight evaluation platform, and you can find the whole uh, build list at the Rotor Builds link. Those of you working to reproduce the results from the NeuroFlight paper expect to see similar results as I have described in this video. For the issues I've previously discussed, we've stopped test flights with the current version and begun working and researching methods to improve performance. I've listed some of the challenges and research areas to pursue for those looking to do research in this area. The first is transfer learning. 
How can we improve the transfer of learning from a simulated environment to the real world? One possible method is to reduce the gap between the simulation and physical world, sometimes referred to as the reality gap. Next is online learning in resource-constrained environments. It's well known that offline learning alone will not be sufficient. The methods we've currently developed thus far have only been for offline learning. That is, we first create a controller and then we compile it into the flight controller. As we have demonstrated, these methods allow us to give the controller basic knowledge and achieve flight. However, the aircraft operating region will change and the aircraft parts will degrade over time. The controller should ideally update itself in real time. In, in control theory, this really has to do with the robustness of the controller and at what point will it be necessary to adapt the controller. In our context, when should the neural network, uh, network, when should the neural network weights be updated? This problem is further compounded due to the limited computational resources available on the aircraft. Next we have reward engineering. Reward engineering defines how the flight controller will be created and thus is one of the most important research areas to consider. However, reward engineering is a major headache. The reinforcement learning algorithms will optimize the controller to whatever you specify and most of the time it's not what you intend. The Neuroflate paper goes into this in a lot of detail. The reward system we use in these test flights is documented in this paper as well. However, it's far from optimal and there's a lot of room for improvement. Next up, we have neural network architectures. How many layers and nodes should we use and what activa activation functions are best? Next, we have training algorithms. Currently, our work has been more focused on the system and control side of things, and therefore, we have used off-the-shelf reinforcement learning algorithms with, with success. However, it's possible a domain-specific training algorithm would provide far better results. Last, we have verification of neural networks. A neural network is essentially thought of as a black box because of, it, because of its numerous complex connections. Thus, it's not simple to understand why the neurocontroller output the value it did. Not fully understanding how a control algorithm computes its output is a problem. Verification of a neural network will verify the network functions as expected. As you can imagine, this affects many applications, not just ours, and it's actively being studied. It is extremely important before a, a neuro flight controller can be widely adopted that their functionality is verified. This is one of the reasons why the firmware images for NeuroFlight are not published. It would be reckless for us to do so. We currently cannot prove that for a certain specific aircraft, it will cause the neural controller into a unique state that will have devastating consequences. Well, that's it for this video. I will be posting the new Jim uh, FC video in the next week or so. And if you have any questions about this video, please feel free to ask in the comment section. And thanks for watching.